Well, Taylor, I just rubbed up against you during our happy, hacky sack game this afternoon and took all your lion luck just for this afternoon. So there we go, look at that. We have one of our Birmingham boys lying down. So super happy. It wasn't far off where I last had his footprints. We knew he would be somewhere around here. Once we did the edge and knew he didn't cross out, he had to be somewhere here. And so we have Nena who is lying down, having a really good rest. And I would have imagined this is going to be the case. You can see his belly is somewhat full. So he was obviously with Tinho at some point. I know there was at a point two male lines on that zebra carcass so he must have been the other culprit and he's definitely got a fairly big bump on his belly not quite as big as what Tinio had yesterday but still enough to make him go into a coma with the heat and food and he'll just kind of sleep it off until a little bit later but the best thing about this is that well hopefully it'll be exactly like what Taylor had yesterday and later we'll be able to hear him roaring again a bit later Laura you say so cute well I don't know if I, male lions are cute. Uh, there's many things that are cute, like lion cubs, but male lions have, especially when they look at you, have this ability to make you feel as inferior as anything in this world. They are massive individuals and they have this piercing glare with these beautiful eyes and it always kind of makes you feel a little bit less sort of well, less significant in this world when a male lion stares you down. So maybe cute while he's sleeping, but as soon as he wakes up, he's definitely something that will be intimidating. And if he roars tonight, he will basically shake everything to the core and make everybody certainly aware that he's the big boss. Now, Guy, you say Nena is your favorite. Well, I must be honest, Guy, I think he's my favorite too. He's definitely one of the better looking of the Birmingham boys. Now, I know a lot of you like Mfumo and Tinio and, and Nsuku and you all will have your favorites. But for me, I just like the way Nena looks. I think he's got a beautiful mane. It tends to stand very tall above his head and he's got that black mohawk that comes down and then he's sort of this dark black on his chest and his mane is nice and full and big. And he always looks like he's in good condition. So, David, you also say best looking Birmingham boy. I, he also doesn't have all the scarring that Mfumo and Tinio have on their faces. But I, there's something about those two. They might not be beautiful, but they have serious um, atmosphere about them. Nadal, you say equivalent to a supermodel. Well, yes. I wonder if he does a runway walk as well. We'll have to wait until later to see him doing his runway strut. Hopefully he'll get up and start strutting around and we'll have to then give him a score and judge him on his runway walk. He tends to have the swagger. The Birmingham boys all do. They kind of have this little hip bounce that they do and it's pretty cool to watch them walking around. So very, very, very happy to find them. That's an unexpected surprise. I really, after this morning when we drove this area, I thought, no, there's no chance that we're going to be able to find this Birmingham boy. And so super excited that we managed to actually get him. And thank you for walking around during the day. Nena, that's very nice of you. But look at the size of those paws. He's got massive, massive feet. It's quite interesting with the Birmingham boys and I would love to actually see all four of them together again and just more than actually seeing all four together, tracking all four together because there's definitely, we find tracks often of the Birmingham boys and there's a marked difference between some of them. There's one that has very small feet that almost looks like a female's track and then there's Nena who has a, quite a large foot when we were tracking him just now I was just looking at it and he actually has quite a big foot it's not quite as big as some of the feet that I've seen the Matimbas used to have massive feet but it would be interesting to see which of the four actually has the biggest feet now Justin you wondering which is the most dominant of the four Birmingham boys? Well, Justin, this is an interesting question and one that I don't know if we can actually answer at the moment. We've seen so little of the Birmingham boys lately and, and particularly within the groupings of females that we see, we haven't seen who's been mating, we haven't seen who's been sort of looking after cubs. And so it's a difficult call to make as to who is dominant at the moment. We know that Tinio spends a lot of time with the Inkahuma Pride. He tends to seem to like the Inkahuma Pride, so we know he's there quite a bit. But in terms of the dominant, most dominant one, I don't know. We know that Insuku walks big distances and covers a lot of territory, which means random places. So it's difficult to say. I think what we need is we need a situation like we had last year where the Nkuma Pride spends a, a vast majority of their time here and then we can watch the interactions of the four brothers or four, four coalition members together and see who actually dominates those situations. 
Faith, you're wondering if male lions are generally alone. Well, Faith, it depends. So in this situation, the Birmingham boys recently are very much on their own. They tend to like to spend time by themselves. Um, what's happened is, is they've established a really large territory and they have a lot of area to patrol and, and on top of that, there's a lot of females to mate with. So they currently are mating with the Torchwood Pride, they're mating with the Inkahuma Pride and the Styx Pride and that's a number of different females to cover and very large area that they're looking for. They're even getting the Salalas and the Mangen Pride slowly filtering back into their areas. So it's going to be interesting just to see how that goes and that means that they stretch quite thin and so they each one goes off in different direction, goes to different prides, marks different areas and they spend a lot of time on their own. If you have a smaller coalition like the Matimbas, they tended to be on together more often than not. So those two males tended to walk around together every single day unless they were in a mating situation where one would then break off with a female and they would spend a lot more time as a coalition um, together. The Majingalan males have been males that have spent a lot of time together even when they mate and they go and they feed on carcasses within a few days they generally are back together it's very seldom that we used to see the Majingalans completely split up we used to see at least two or three together at a time so it was they seem to be a lot more cohesive as a unit the Mopokos we know split with the kinky tail and and Mr. T that came up into the north and the rest down into the western side and central parts of the Sabi Sands and they formed their own little groupings together and they were also very seldom on their own those two groupings so it just depends on on the dynamic and the numbers as well as the amount of area that they're having to cover these guys just cover so much that they at the moment spread so thin they also haven't been tested which means there's no reason for them to stay together